Hi again. I'm assuming that if you're watching at this point, you want to know a little bit of the specifics about the, how the Gospel in Your Hands presentation works. And there's a, there's a reason behind everything that we're doing in this little uh, presentation. Uh, number one, uh, we live in a time and we live in a culture where um, so many people don't know what they believe, if they believe anything at all, and if they believe something, it's probably kind of a, an amalgamation or a combination of all kinds of ideas from, from this faith, that system, their idea, this experience, and they kind of put it all together. And so we live in kind of a very multicultural world. Uh, we live in a very post-modern, post-Christian, um, post-literate sometimes, and, and in some cases a post-rational world where things don't make sense. Uh, younger people more and more are believing in things that contradict each other and so they live with a certain amount of tension and they don't and they don't think linearly and they don't think logically and um, they think laterally instead. And so so you've got this whole situation where you have one message that you're trying to communicate to people across the board uh, regardless of what language they they speak, what country they come from, uh, what worldview they represent. And so, so this whole thing with the gospel in your hands is an attempt to try to tell the story of the gospel from the Bible in kind of a condensed fashion so that we can get over a lot of these hurdles that are there in the culture that, that act as barriers to communication and understanding. So the first thing that we need to do, and what we do do in the Gospel in Your Hands presentation, is you have to frame out your deity. You have to know the God that you're talking about. Because as Christians, when we say God, we understand what we mean by God. But when we, when we say God to someone else, they don't hear with the same listening framework. Okay, so, so you have to define who your God is, describe who your God is. And that's why we use the fingers and the thumb, where God is, has, a, has a mind, he has emotions, he has a will, he communicates and he creates with words. This whole combination means that God is a personal God, he is someone who is a person, someone that another person can relate to. And so that's really important. So you must frame out your deity. Um, I work with university campuses, or sorry, university uh, college students, and many of them international students. And the biggest uh, fallacy of thinking about, about uh, um, God is that he is either not there or that he's some other thing that is anything but personal. And so you've got that issue that must be addressed. You must frame out your deity. The second part is that you must frame out your humanity. And so uh, going back to colleges and universities, the biggest fallacy about human nature today on the college campus is that uh, humans are computers with meat, all right? So, so what they believe is that, okay, we've got this thing called the brain. They don't know, can't explain that. They don't know exactly how it came about, but it's tied to this thing called the body. And so we're computers with meat. And my response to that is, okay, you could put a laptop computer on a T-bone steak and wait a, mil a gazillion years, it'll never become a human being. So it's just absolutely absurd what people are trying to do to define and describe human nature. Human nature must include things like mind, emotions, will, creativity, and then uh, being able to communicate in language. So you have this whole storyline of God and his creation. That, so you frame out your deity, you frame out your humanity, and then you must tell the story of uh, the relationship starting in Genesis 1 and 2 in peace and harmony with this God. And the reason this is important is because no other religious system has this as a beginning. None of them do. None of them have this kind of a thing that, that where, where we long for peace, we long for harmony, we long for restoration with our God. We want meaning and purpose in life. We want to understand where we're going in life. And this is the only beginning that makes sense that we can appeal for human beings to return to. That if we don't start the story here, if you start off with, for example, uh, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life, that's not a bad start, but it's some, sometimes it's inadequate depending upon the people you're trying to reach. If you want to start off with uh, something like good news, bad news, that's not a bad way to start, but it's sometimes just a little short on the people that you're trying to reach. So when you start with where the Bible starts, and you start with this story, you're appealing to the highest desires of human beings that want to see some sort of a reconciliation. Most people on the planet understand that things are not operating the way they could and that the way they should. 
And so when you start off with this, you realize, okay, this is where it started. This was God's intent. This shows the goodness of God. This shows the love of God because he's drawing us back. He's calling us back to himself to have something like this that approximates what we lost. If you want to call it paradise lost, that's fine. But either way, this, is, this, is, this works across the board, works across the worldviews, works across the culture, the languages. When you start off with this visual, more and more people are going to be able to say, wow, that is what I long for. That is what I, I'm hunting for. Even if I'm not hunting officially for it or, or in a concerted way, I still long to have that in my life. And when we get our act together with God, then it's amazing how we have more opportunity to reconcile many of the other relationships that we have. And that is usually the thing that causes most pain for most people. So that's why you, you, you frame your deity, you frame your humanity, you frame the beginning, and then you tell the story from that part out, that point out. And so if you can do that, I hope this little ex explanation helps you understand the gospel in your hands.